If Jesus asks me to do a task that seems impossible, will I obey without hesitation? This is a reflection question for today. Holy Spirit, make my heart open to the Word of God. Make my heart open to goodness. Make my heart open to the beauty of God. Do you know the story of St. Joan of Arc? St. Joan of Arc is a national heroine of France. She was a peasant girl who, believing that she was acting under divine guidance, led the French army in a momentous victory at Ordines in 1429 that repulsed an English attempt to conquer France during the Hundred Years' War. St. Joan of Arc was a Catholic with extreme personal piety who believed she was guided by the voices of St. Michael, St. Catherine of Alexandria, and St. Margaret of Antioch in her mission to aid the Dauphin Charles and expel the English from the Valois Kingdom of France. St. John of Arc was burned at the stake in 1431 at the age of 19 after a corrupt church trial found her guilty of heresy. The trial would later be nullified by the church and 500 years later, in 1920, John of Arc was declared a saint by Pope Benedict XV. Saint John of Arc is the patron saint of France. Soldiers, prisoners, those in need of courage, those ridiculed for their faith, and youth, among other things. John of Arc's feast day is May 30. John of Arc was a young French peasant, born in 1412, 90 years into the Hundred Years' War, in the small village of Domremy in eastern France. John of Arc's parents, Jacques de Arc and Isabel Romy, were simple peasant farmers. They owned sheep, which John of Arc tended in her youth. John of Arc could neither read nor write, and she did not know how to wield a sword before she began her mission. This makes her military success, where hardened commanders failed, even more extraordinary, an act of God as the people saw it. At the age of eight, 13, John of Arc had locutions, an entire mystical phenomenon that involves hearing a divine voice and repeatedly heard the voices of St. Michael the Archangel, St. Margaret of Antioch, and St. Catherine of Alexandria. These three inform her of a special mission given her by God to crown the rightful King of France and thereby end the dynastic dispute that undergirded the Hundred Years' War. Along the way, she convinced lords, soldiers, and the French heir to the throne, Charles VII, of her mission. After a lengthy interrogation, she was given charge of the army and successfully lifted the siege of Orleans, on which the fate of the entire war hung, and then freed several towns along the route to crowning Charles VII in the Cathedral of Reims. Joan of Arc was executed by the Catholic Church after a sham trial condemned her of a relapse heresy. The trial was conducted by church authorities sympathetic to the English, who hoped to discredit her claims of heavenly assistance to end the war with the French king on the throne. Convicted of heresy, she was taken to the stake to be burned, at which point under penalty of death, she signed a paper renouncing her visions and agreeing never to wear men's clothing. Four days later, Joan of Arc confessed to being afraid of her death, but reiterated that the visions were true and donned men's clothing once again, all of which constituted her supposed relapse to heresy. She was burned at the stake, clutching a crucifix to her body and proclaiming the name Jesus as she died, prompting an onlooker to say, we have burned a saint. Joan of Arc was not canonized for her ability to free the French from English domination, but for her heroic dedication to the will of God and personal holiness. While Joan commanded the army of France, she drove prostitutes from camp, refused to allow soldiers to rape and pillage the towns that gave them entrance, 
encouraged confession before battle, and sharply reduced the cussing and oath swearing of the men under her charge. She remained committed to a life of contemplation and prayer amid the battles she oversaw, never once lifting her sword against anyone, anyone save to chase out a prostitute. Her faith and insights became evident at her trial, forming the foundation of several summaries of theology in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Her confidence in Jesus and the Catholic Church remained unshaken, even after being wrongly condemned to death by the Church. Today's Gospel invites us to obey Jesus without hesitation, even when asked to walk on water, a task that seems impossible to do. We look at the example of St. John of Arc, who fulfilled a seemingly impossible task from God using her very limited capabilities with heroic dedication even to the point of death. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for loving us unconditionally, for suffering, dying on the cross, for your resurrection and ascension, and for inviting us to obey without hesitation even the task seems impossible to do. Please forgive us for the many times that we disobeyed you. We ask for your grace to enable us to fulfill the task that you want us to do. Empower us to overcome whatever barrier is causing us to disobey you. Breathe in me, Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, Holy Spirit, that my work to me be holy. Draw my heart, the Holy Spirit, that I love but what is holy. Strengthen me, Holy Spirit, to defend all that is holy. Guard me then, Holy Spirit, that I always may be holy. Amen. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit.